In Idaho, an extraordinary public feud between the state's two top leaders took a bizarre turn this week. When Governor Brad Little briefly left the state on Tuesday, the lieutenant governor, Janice McGeehan, went rogue and issued an executive order involving COVID vaccines. But that's not all. She also attempted to activate the National Guard and send troops to the U.S.-Mexico border. Dan Simon is in Boise with the story. The latest dust up between Idaho's Republican Governor Brad Little and its Republican Lieutenant Governor Janice McGeehan happened this week when Little went to Texas. And it's time for the Biden administration to wake up. To stand with Governor Greg Abbott and others to blast the Biden administration's handling of the southern border. My fellow Idahoans. While Little is considered a strong conservative but more mainstream, McGeehan, elected separately, is aligned with the far right wing of the party, seen last year holding a gun and a Bible in a video that criticized coronavirus restrictions. We recognize that all of us are by nature free and equal. She's running for the top job next year, presumably against Little, and in a bold move, citing a clause in the state constitution, used his absence to seize temporary control of the state and issue a controversial executive order banning schools from mandating COVID-19 vaccines. She made a similar move months earlier, banning masks in public buildings, while Little attended a Republican conference in Tennessee. McGeehan also inquired about mobilizing the Idaho National Guard and sending troops to the Mexican border. All these actions later rescinded by Governor Little. Our Constitution states that when the governor leaves the state, all duties that, that apply to the office of the governor then fall to the lieutenant governor. Who has the power? Little has never mandated masks, but has allowed counties and schools to make their own decisions. On vaccines, he's banned state officials from requiring proof of COVID vaccinations. But he didn't specifically call out schools. McGeehan tweeting that her executive order fixed that. We caught up with McGeehan outside her office. But you know what you're doing. You're running for governor, and when he leaves town, you're issuing these, these orders. You're undermining what he's doing when you're doing this. You know, I, you, you're, I'm not going to talk anymore to an activist. I'm, if you're asking me fair questions as a reporter, then that's fine. But if you're well, going to be an activist, I'm, I'm... I'm not being an activist, but what do you say to your critics? who say that this is absurd. Again, you're being an activist. I am not anti-vax. I am not anti-testing of COVID. We know a lot of people that are suffering from this right now, but I am very much against having it be a mandate in our state. And that's what this is all about. People should not be forced to decide to so he do never something. mandated anything. The governor okay. never mandated anything. Interview's over. For his part, Governor Little has been very quiet on the matter, with one of his aides saying he's trying to rise above the political noise. Governor, uh, all your reaction governors. to the actions by your lieutenant governor? We have to, we got to go, go. All Could right. Could you just give us a, a brief statement about, we'll, about we'll take care it? Of Do you it. think it's political? Uh, it could be political. We've had uh, Republican governors and Democrat lieutenant governors. They work it out. Jim Jones is the former chief justice of the Idaho Supreme Court. His assessment, blunt. This is the only... Uh, lieutenant governor that I can recall that has acted like an idiot. Governor Little has made the argument that it's a mischaracterization of the Idaho Constitution to say that any time he leaves the state that the lieutenant governor would automatically take over and he got a supporting opinion from the Idaho Attorney General's office. Nonetheless, the AG said it was a close legal question. Ultimately, it would need to be resolved in the courts. John. All right, Dan Simon, quite a story. Thank you so much.